Okay, hello. So welcome to the second book of the Return to the Garden of Eden series, uh, Raising Christos. So this book was really fun to write. Um, very challenging, very maddening, <laughs> but very, very revealing and amazing because this book is it's got, I'll show you the parts, but <clears throat> a lot of it, um, I will show you some of it, uh, goes into, this is the etymology book. This is all about the, the word name meanings and figuring out um, the real mechanics behind the Bible codes, um, which is really obsessive work. <laughs> and I even went into gematria a little bit um, just to get ultra obsessive with it. Um, but it was really fun and um, I'm sure, because the whole point of doing this is like, okay, the code is in the Bible and when we decode what those word names mean, they actually mean uh, quite often from what I've discovered is that they're all about the anatomy and the physiology of the human body. So when we know exactly what Jesus Christ of Nazareth was born in a manger at Bethlehem means means nothing to do with the place in the name. Um, so I will show you that example because it's super cool. And it's all to do with, um, we can locate those on acupuncture points as well, and then we can locate those places on the Neijing to alchemical painting. And then we can also locate them in Ireland, which is the third book. So it's the alchemy of the human body as the land of Ireland and also the land that is painted as the Neijing to Taoist painting and they're all the same. So therefore, if we know, know them all, then we have a holographic overlaid fractalized map that we can use to really, really um, uh, ex or amplify our, our personal practice of raising the Christ oil the whole point of doing this. Um, so the book, we've got the introduction. That's a little bit about my personal story. Um, I started writing this work on January the 24th of 2022, and it all happened in the garden one afternoon, and I did uh, the layering, as I've just spoken, of layering my human physical body with the Taoist painting and all the little characters doing things while practicing the microcosmic orbit while layering Irish uh, landscapes and megalithic structures into that. And the result for me was, and this was all at the time that the moon was in my sign, the result was that I actually went into a spontaneous state, altered state of, um, I guess the closest thing I could describe it as is when I did the, the Vipassana for the first time and after I got through all of uh, moving through all my bodily attachments and pain and, and things like that um, I actually entered into a very different experience of what it was to be inside a, hu a human physical body in interaction with nature and um, under the sun and you know with the cats in the garden and, and the elements and it was yeah it was very blissful um, and that kind of started the whole book off um, so since then it's been a bit of a deconstruction so um, that's what the introduction is about and then of course the the summary what is raising Christos, I call it, or some people call it raising the chrism or the sacred secretion or raising the Christ oil within, it's all the same thing. Um, and that chapter is basically going through what we already know from what other people have researched and written about and talked about. Um, not that I've actually read other people's books on this um, because I already know anatomy and physiology enough. Um, I can kind of work it out or myself not to read others work um, but it is yeah telling about the electromagnetic amplifications where that happens in the brainstem uh, what happens when the moon comes into your sign and it causes um, uh, magnetic compression 
And when the crystals in our body are compressed, they release electricity and energy, and magnetic fields, and all of that cool stuff. And so Christ and creation, this chapter is about um, the cosmology behind the rising Christos event, which is, um, you know, the cosmology and the mythology. So the cosmology is about the winter solstice, and that is related to the crucifixion, as uh, Jesus represents the death on the cross. Uh, uh, before he goes into the tomb to be resurrected. Uh, that is all talking about the cosmology of the, um, uh, the winter solstice sunset and the sun standing still on the horizon for that time period. So just getting to know that again, revisiting that, um, commonly talked about. Gematria, that's giving us um, examples of more more decode. You know, gematria is the, the, the numbers behind the words and then rearranging <coughs> of them to get different words that have the same pattern code. And when we go through that, we can actually see um, a bit of a storyline repeating itself within the hidden code, within the hidden code. So it's more for fun, the Gematria section, just to, um, as an exercise to get the brain kind of um like mental gymnastics to just like not soften the brain sharpen the brain but you know just do all this all the exercises to just get to thinking um holistically um because it's all about symbols symbols and code symbols and code so trees and nature this is talking about um uh the the tree relationships behind the jesus codes <clears throat> and um you know jesus was a carpenter he died on a cross of wood uh if you swap the j for jesus with the i or the uh, original irish name Iessa, um and then that uh, letter has been swapped in, in hebrew to a y uh, or yeshua uh, then we can swap out the word Jew for you and we get you trees and this sort of starts to tie in the, um, the the elemental nature of it all again because you know the Jesus crucifixion story it's all about this the soul the soul the sun going around the four seasons going around the cross or the creos and um, that is talking about you know harmony of cycles of agricultural cycles and so we we'll have to keep reminding ourselves and revisiting the fact that this is all about the elements, the interplay of elements, and that is the alchemy that's happening on a micro fractal scale within our human body. So, um, <clears throat> okay, the next bit, this is what I'm going to show you. This is cool. The Jesus Bible codes. Okay, so here I've, I've divided Jesus up into, um, what if I, I've divided up, him up into birth, and life and death and resurrection and ascension so it's got quite a lot of key words to go through <clears throat> so as i said before jesus christ of nazareth was born in a manger at bethlehem to joseph and the virgin mary on december 25th so when we look into the etymology um i haven't referenced the et etymology in this table although the the etymology I have referenced throughout the book is properly referenced. I just didn't want to chuck it all in the table because it makes it too long. Um, so Jesus means essence or savior or seed. Christ means the anointing oil. Um, and then in Irish, krios, it actually means the, the solar cross. And then Nazareth means to sprout or shoot. So we can think of a seed sprouting. And then born in a manger, a manger means a crib, but it also means a chewed place. And what is the chewed place in the human body? That is our mouth. And then Bethlehem means the house of bread and or the house of meat. So from that little section there, we've got 
the the vital essence seed which saves us um, is sprouted uh, in a manger and it uh, and then is delivered in the house of bread and meat and um, it is the essentially the, the anointing oil uh, that carries the seed within it. Um, so I've also got here, you know, we'll get to this in Ireland, but uh, Bethlehem actually exists in Ireland. There's a few towns in the world. Um, New Zealand has a place called Bethlehem. Um, but interestingly, the location of where Bethlehem is in Ireland is actually in the Neijing to Taoist painting in the stomach region. Exactly. And that's where the Mary is. That she's um, seen, seen as the woman at the weaving wheel, weaving a red ribbon, which is actually in the Bible as well, um, about the, the houses of Judah. So the Virgin Mary, the Virgo, um, she's related to the harvest and uh, she's associated with food. Um, so, you know, we can go on and on with this, but I just wanted to show you <clears throat> a couple of things I've discovered and why it's so exciting and why it's so fun. And we can apply this all directly, practically to the human body and the raising of the Christ oil within with some tips like what the three wise kings bought the baby Jesus in the, the line of, of David, the line of Judah. Um, they bought him frankincense, myrrh, and gold. So interestingly, <clears throat> um, what I've described in this book in one of the chapters is that I think it's myrrh. Um, myrrh is actually really amazing for um, detoxifying your mouth <laughs> and cleaning your teeth, as is frankincense. Um, so when we're swallowing the saliva in the microcosmic orbit, having a bit of myrrh handy to make sure the mouth is clean is like a, a decode, Bible decode, talking about the mouth again. And then frankincense to myrrh used for mummification. So that's a, a little clue to um, him being associated with birth, death and rebirth. Um, and then gold, I'm relating that in this book um, to two things. Gold as in the yellow part of the blood, which is um, the blood plasma, and ormus, monoatomic gold, which possibly we produce in this state. Hard to prove. No one's done a science paper on it, I, I don't think, but it would be a good idea to do one. <laughs> um, so, and also in this book, the, res the research I'm showing is showing that we do have ormus in the body just in a little little bit. Cool. So just going quickly through. Um, so we've just had a look at Bible codes for Jesus. Moses, I'm doing the same. Moses is all about the mouth and the tongue and speaking and the word and the tone and the sword and the stone. He's a bit of a Merlin. Um, and I've done the same for Horus and Ra and Isis and Osiris and a little bit for Santa Claus because, as we know, these cultural patterns have been updated since the Bible. And um, they also come from different cultures and different lands, like Egypt. So the word seed and oil, this is referencing George Carey's work on the God-man quite a bit in here uh, to show the breakdown of what the word means in his opinion when it's uh, put through the Hebrew glyph character word meanings. And then there's me cross-correlating that with... Um, the seed being produced in the manger at Bethlehem, which is showing us the Mother Mary. Um, and also in Chinese medicine terms, this is the maiden at the well, and she is the stomach and the spleen or the digestive system. And so how all of that symbology and um, anatomy and physiology relates to the production of the Jesus Christ um, seed in terms of um, minerals and uh, food in the house of Bethlehem, the house of bread and meat, and and what happens to the seed after that. Um, and then we go into neuroscience and all of the systems in the brain, because why not? Um, 
you know, if we're going to do it all, we might as well do it all, right? And um, this section I've done with a lot of pictures. The, these books have a lot of pictures and diagrams, if I didn't mention that already, um, just to make the read really fun and really interesting. Um, because when I started studying all this, um, I started meditating when I was 17 and I got really into wanting to learn about alchemy and magic, as you do when you're a 17 year old chick. And I couldn't find anything that was really appropriate that showed, you know, symbology. Um, I was really interested in symbology, but the only symbology I really ever found was like, you know, this is back in the 90s. Um, I only ever found like black magic books or occult stuff that was you probably shouldn't look at because you, you shouldn't shouldn't mess with that stuff. Um, so I've created this book in, in the way that would... Um, you know, the 17-year-old version of me was interested in alchemy, could actually find some useful, practical, safe, uh, based in reality, This well, not that the other stuff's not real, but um, based in um, the more physical realm and the more, um, yeah, not dealing with entities realm. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, we go through the limbic system, um, the basal ganglia, um, uh, the midbrain, the brainstem, uh, the cerebellum, <coughs> cerebrum, <coughs> excuse me, and where are the parts, what do they look like, what do they do, how do they relate to raising Christ oil, are there any codes in the, in the etymology of the meanings of some of the parts in the systems, and how, yeah, how do they relate to the raising of the Christ oil, so that's all tied in there. Um, <coughs> And then, really fun going into the pineal gland, a bit of my own personal experiences in there, um, and then going into the electromagnetics and the bioluminescence and the piezoelectricity of the pineal gland, the structure, the function, uh, the fact that it is a radio antennae, and it is the, the red shiny nose of Santa's reindeer Rudolph, and where it is in terms of um, its position in between uh, the ventricles and the thalamus of the brain, the um, Santa's sleigh, and the Easter eggs, um, and then, you know, structure determines function, how is it related to um, psychic communication. Dimethyltryptamine, so, tryptamine, excuse me, um, DMT, so a lot of people have said or surmised or mused that DMT is involved in the raising of the Christ oil and I wanted to get into all of the neuroscience. I read so many neuroscience papers to write this book, so many, because <laughs> um, I've referenced everything that I've found and I've, you know, wanted to make it really uh, well, well referenced and then if you want to find out you can look up the same paper as I read. And, um, so I wanted to find out if DMT was produced in the body at all because, you know, they're all hy hypotheses or fear theories that the pineal gland produces the DMT. Um, if it does, it's in trace amounts too small to actually be psychoactive. Um, but there is DMT in the body nevertheless because it's found in the urine and the feces therefore it is excreted out as a waste product so it's in there somewhere and it's actually more abundant in the lungs so it gets back into um, the practice of the Qigong microcosmic orbit which is all about the breath and um, one of the doctors I research in there Dr. David Nichols he was saying you know that it's possibly like uh, endorphins that get released on a runner's high, something like that, or maybe it is actually DMT that's being released um, because it's to do with uh, activating it in the lungs. So I go on to all of that in this chapter and the monoamine oxidase and the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, and I found a really, really exciting bit that relates directly to the monoamine oxidase inhibitor in the cerebral spinal fluid under the influence of electricity. And there's a paper I found from 1985, I think, doing its science experiment that showed that um, when electroshock therapy was applied uh, to the spine, 
it would um, increase monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Therefore, the theory is that um, this would allow the DMT to move through the cerebral spinal fluid and into the brain. Mm. Um, the claustrum. This is one I wanted to really investigate and, like, I don't know, understand. Because I couldn't understand what George Carey was on about in his book when he said that the claustrum released an oil. Because when I looked at the claustrum in terms of the um, structure and the function, it didn't, it's not possible that it can produce an oil. <clears throat> it's a tissue that doesn't necessarily produce oil. So then I, um, you know, I, I was just really curious about, that's the, the one thing I wanted to do with this book to, you know, add on to Carrie's work, um, which was that he, he did a beautiful job of, of the poetics and everything, but I really wanted more technical stuff. I was, really wanting technical stuff and I couldn't find it or it was a bit too poetical for me and it was a bit of guesswork and I don't like guesswork so I wanted something a bit more tangible so I went into the classroom um, and found that I couldn't find anything to do with to do with oil it's got a lot to do with neurotransmitters especially on glutamate but it does have a bit to do with consciousness and it is actually in, in neuroscience research called the um, on and off switch of the brain because they discovered that um, by accident when they were doing some um, science research with uh, a woman with she having some kind of seizures and they um, put little electrons on the claustrum and when it was electrified she actually switched off consciousness she was alive and alert, but uh, she was not conscious. And then when they took the electrostimulation off the claustrum, she regained consciousness. <laughs> so it was able to switch the brain on and off and on and off. So that's some interesting stuff. And I do go into the claustrum in a tangent all about um, nitrous, uh, nitric acid, nitrogen, nitrous oxide, I got all excited and I thought that nitrous oxide was being produced in the brain and um, it kind of is, it can be, if, if your liver's not working properly, which then, you know, got me to muse, is this altered state of consciousness, uh, you know, the Santa's workshop, the elves in the brain, the DMT machine elves, has it got to do with too much nitrous oxide in the brain? Uh, so we're going into a bit of understanding on that in the next chapter, the nit nitrogen and ammonia and the nitrogen cycle, which happens in nature to do with trees. And it's actually a really important cycle, um, which brings us into this as above, so below, as, with, as within, so without um, fractal, micro, uh, macro nature of the existence of what, you know, our, our planet that we live in. We need the trees to um, provide us with amino acids, and DMT is one of them, uh, we need them to, to make our amino acids from the nitrogen, which comes from ammonia, which we urinate out of our bodies, which is coming from, um, you know, which gets, ammonia gets converted in the liver and then turned into uric acid, which the kidneys excrete as urine. So, <laughs> This um, life cycle of amino acids and DMT and, and all the other amino acids that we need to build proteins to build DNA is actually all based on the waste products that we excrete, which is so fascinating. Anyway, um, so what's in the saliva? That's the, the chemical breakdown of what's in the saliva, relating it to back into the Taoist stuff. The land of milk and honey, that's looking into what does that mean? <laughs> um, and me hypothesizing a little bit on um, that because in Carrie's work he was saying that it's the pineal and the pituitary gland secretions but I found out in this work that hormones don't have colors so uh, that again was not technical enough for me so I had to go in and investigate there and I've actually in the third book which is the Irish elixir I found the land of milk and honey again so I found the land of milk and honey in Ireland and I've also found the land of milk and honey within the physiology of the body. So it's, you know, the pattern archetype. 
Um, and then, of course, um, taking all of this into account, let's re-summarize the raising of the Christ oil alchemical process um, to end it all with and continue on to the next part. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Sorry it was a bit long. There's so much in these books. I mean, they just keep getting longer and longer. So I'm just really excited now to start presenting them to the world because I've been a hermit in a cave in silence for a year. So, um, yeah, once I get talking on this stuff, it's hard for me to shut up. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in that book, um, it is available on my website right now, anayasciencewitch.com. And um, I'm going to present the third book to you. Okay.